Uh, update on Mika, if you have it, as well as Richards and Kincaid, and then just general thoughts on the scrimmage today. Yeah, similar update as yesterday. We're still day to day with these guys. We're not sure when we're going to have them. Um, they're all close, so hopefully sooner than later. Uh, I thought the scrimmage was better today. I thought there was better pace to it. I didn't think it was as sloppy as it was uh, yesterday, and that's probably natural. You're hoping that's the progression that you make throughout these scrimmages. And you know, as we start getting more into the teaching of the systems and structure, things of that nature, uh, these scrimmages hopefully start to continue to go in that direction and look cleaner. Next question comes from Rick Carpinello with The Athletic. Carpy, go ahead. Hey, Dave. Uh, just one, I know it's two scrimmages, and as you said, they're a little ragged, but impressions of uh, Capo on that line and, and what you need to see from him if he's going to fit on that line? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I like the progression. I think they're making strides. I think they create some offense. Um, you know, he's just going to learn to play off those two guys. And... You know, if he does that and continues to go in that direction, that line can be a very effective line for us. He understands the role that he's going to have to play on that line with those two players. Uh, that being said, we also have talked with both Brad and, and Stromer about you know, the chemistry with that line and what it's going to take for them to have success. So it's not just one guy, it's all three of those guys uh, understanding what their roles are uh, on that line and what they're going to have to do to have success. Next question comes from Colin Stevenson with Newsday. Colin, go ahead. Hi, Dave. Uh, um, with your goaltending situation, you don't have Hank here, obviously. Uh, does Igor, uh, is Igor number one uh, coming in? I mean, does he have the advantage over mm -hmm. Alex, or do you feel like um, it's more of a battle between the two guys to, to see, you know, who's number one? In this season, every team in this league is going to have to rely on their two goalies. We're fortunate because we feel like we've got two number one goalies, and I'm not just saying that. It's you know, Georgie's had a good career so far. I think, the, you know, he's ready to make the next step. Shesty's in a small sample, certainly proven he can be a really good goalie at this level. So, you know, we feel we've got great goaltending depth, and both of these guys are, are, are going to be contributors, and <clears throat> we're certainly going to lean on both of them during the course of the season. Next question comes from Mark Roseman with Sports Talk New York. Mark, go ahead. Mark, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep, got you now, Mark. Okay. All right, great. Hey, Coach, yesterday you touched on when we talked about the truncated schedule and the division rivalries <clears> that <throat> you have to be intense, but you also have to be smart. And there's going to be those game in and game out battles. Last year, I guess the, the guys you counted on for the, that grit were probably the two Brendan, Smith and Lemieux, and, and Lindgren. And, and Trooper in the second half has started bringing his physical game. Does the, the schedule open up some roster spots, maybe for a Batetto or a Ke Keandre Miller. And is it putting too much on Keandre just because of his size to, to make him be that physical presence in his first season? Yeah, I think, listen, uh, everybody's born with a little level, different level of intensity and physicality. I mean, that's just people's DNA. And we need everybody to be as physical as they possibly can within the realm of the game. And it's just, you know, there's different ways to be physical, you know. Uh, if you're five foot ten, 180 pounds, you're going to be physical in a different way than someone who's six four, two twenty. And you know, our whole team has to have more of a physical, in-your-face mentality. And that doesn't mean fighting. That doesn't mean running people through the glass. It just means staying on top of people, taking away time and space, and being physical in your own way. And we just don't need two guys to do it. We need everybody to do it. Next question comes from Larry Brooks from New York Post. Larry, go ahead. David, um, with Kako, he's, um, you lost your most defense-conscious defense player on that line, obviously. And, right. Um, Kako had some issues in the defensive zone last year. So yep. what is the challenge there for him, and I guess for the other two guys, um, to compensate for, for, for losing uh, Jesper off that line? Well, it was a conversation that I had with both Bred and Stromer in the bubble. When, you know, Quickie got hurt in that first shift of the first game, I brought him in. I said, okay. I said, if you could pick one forward that could play with you, who would it be? And they both kind of looked at each other, and they started rattling off characteristics of a player that they were looking for. And I said, well, that's all good and dandy, but we need you two to do more of that as well. It can't just be one guy. And I think that's what's going to have to happen uh, this season is – 
regardless of who's playing with him. And right now it's Kako, and he and I have talked about what he's going to have to do. But we need it from we need it from everybody. We need a more of an in-your-face, staying on top of people, uh, conscient, defensive conscious approach to having success. It just can't be one guy on a line. And I don't think those guys will have to sacrifice offense to do that. I think they'll be just as productive offensively if they take that approach. And you know, I'm certainly anticipating that's how they're going to approach it. Next question is from Dan Rosen, <clears throat> NHL.com. Dan, go ahead. Yeah, uh, David, this might sound crazy because the impression you were made last year, but he still only played in 12 games and, and one, one sort of playoff game, the, right. the playoff game, you know. Right. Is it enough for you to, to go into the season thinking – expectations are for this guy to be in a top of the line NHL goaltender is, is 13 games enough uh, based on what he's done yes it's, but it's like you said it's a small sample I mean it's that we also have to keep in mind he's not a 22 year old kid who came out of college or junior hockey he's got a, a pro background where he's had an awful lot of success so <clears throat> but again I know everybody wants to talk about Shesty but you know Georgie's had a good He's had a good career so far for a young goalie. And, you know, last year was a difficult year for everybody, but I think Georgie in particular, probably uh, more so than anybody because uh, just the way the whole thing evolved. And uh, obviously it was tough on Hank, we all know that, but from a young goalie who had, you know, had some success uh, to be put in that situation, it wasn't easy. Next question comes from Vince, Vince Mercado. Vince, go ahead. Yeah, David, we've touched on it with a couple questions today, and I sort of hinted at it yesterday, but I wanted to follow up. Just with the when you talk about playing in your face being a harder team to play against, I, I think it's been pretty clear from what you've said and from what we've seen that that is, some, that is something you guys are stressing right now. But do you feel confident that you have the personnel to play that kind of style to make that work? I mean, can, you, can these players that you have now grow their game to, to be that type of team that we saw succeed you know, from other teams in the playoffs? I, I do. And when I say being your, it's just skating more. It's just having a, an urgency to not let somebody skate by you. I know that sounds so simplistic and it sounds so simple, but, you know, if, regardless of your structure, if you have a mentality that I'm not going to let someone skate by me, that's a pretty good system. And, you know, regardless of what your system is, whether you're in the forecheck in the offensive zone or the neutral zone or whether you're getting to people in the D zone, you can't let people skate by you. And I know it's, you know, it, it, it's a little bit more of a football mentality. I mean, in football, every yard, every inch matters. And I think in hockey sometimes people say, I'm close to this guy, I'll let someone else do it. And to me, we have to get out of that mentality. We have to get out of that mentality to make the next step as an organization. And final question comes from Colin Stevenson. Colin, <clears throat> go ahead. Dave, I'm curious about Morgan Barron, um, and you know I know he had the assist today uh, in in the on that second goal. Um, what have you seen from him, if, if if at all? Can you see anything in in two days? Um, and in a weird way, does not having Ika sort of open up opportunity for him to get a look from you that he might not otherwise get? Well, I think it, not having Mika gives a few guys an opportunity to give a little bit of a different look. But, you know, Morgan's a big kid who can skate. I'm obviously familiar with him from the college game, coaching against him. And, you know, when you stand on the be opposing bench, um, you're usually consumed with your own team. And the only guys you really recognize on the other team are the guys that are really good. And I certainly took note of him when we were playing Cornell when I was at BU and certainly under you know realized this kid had a future in pro hockey. And... But you know, for a guy who's that size, who can skate, who's an honest player, who's got some skill too to complement that, he's got a chance to be a good player for us. And when that is, who knows? I mean, we're going to find out. But I certainly like what I've seen so far.